What's up? Merite here. Let's talk about the anatomy of the respiratory system. In this segment, we will be talking about the anatomy of the larynx. Alright, so the respiratory system consists of all the organs involved in breathing. These are the nasal cavity, the pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and the lungs. In our last video, we covered the anatomy of the nasal cavity. Now, let's do the anatomy of the larynx. So in this video, we will start with orientation by looking at the anterior and the posterior view of the larynx. And then we will talk briefly about the cartilages that make up the larynx, as well as the ligaments and joints that hold the whole thing together. Then we will do the walls of the larynx and talk a little bit about what's special with the laryngeal cavity. Alright, so the larynx is located right about here. It lies between the hyoid bone and the trachea and right in front of the esophagus. Topographically, it starts at the region of the 4th, 5th cervical vertebrae and ends at the region of the 6th, 7th cervical vertebrae. Now, what is the function of the larynx? The first is air passage. It serves as a passage so that air can go down into the lungs. Another thing is that the larynx is also called the voice box because it produces sound. And it does that through a process called phonation, where these vocal cords rub into each other, producing different pitch. And we will go through this at the end of this video. Now let's continue with the orientation by looking at the larynx from different angles. So if you look at it anteriorly, this is how the larynx is going to look like. And if you look at the larynx posteriorly, this is how it's going to look like. Notice the hyoid bone above the larynx and the trachea under it. Now let's start by understanding how the larynx is built. So the larynx is made up of six types of cartilage in total three paired and three unpaired cartilages. Cartilages that are unpaired means that you only have one of each and these are the epiglottis in purple, thyroid cartilage in blue and the cricoid cartilage here in light green. The paired are the cartilages you have two of, so two of each and these include the aditenoid cartilage here in yellow, the cornicolate cartilage in red and the cuneiform cartilage here in green. So these are the cartilages that make up the larynx. And so this is a little more realistic depiction of the larynx. We have the epiglottis, the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage. We have the aritenoid, the cricoid, and the cuneiform cartilages. Let's now cover each of these cartilages in detail and look at their characteristics. And we will start with the thyroid cartilage. So again, here's an anterior view and a posterior view of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage is highlighted here in blue. And just to have an overview, let's go ahead and add the list of the cartilages we're about to cover. Now the thyroid cartilage is mainly made up of two plates, or two laminas. There's a right lamina and there's a left lamina. These two meet in the middle and form the laryngeal prominence, which is also known as the Adam's apple. You will notice there are two processes on the thyroid cartilage as well. There's one going straight up towards the hyoid bone, called the superior horn and a process going down towards the cricoid cartilage, called the inferior horn. So that's the most important structures of the thyroid cartilage for now. Let's check that one from our list. Next is the cricoid cartilage, here in light green, located below the thyroid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage looks different depending on which side you're looking from. Anteriorly, it has an arch protruding forward, and posteriorly, it has a plate with two important surfaces. There is the aditenoid articular surface, which is where the aditenoid cartilage binds to the cricoid cartilage, forming a joint. And it has a thyroid articular surface, which form a joint with the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage. So that's all for the cricoid cartilage. Let's put a check mark here. Next is the epiglottis, which is here in purple. It doesn't really have any specific structures of importance for now, but it lies behind the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. And if you look at the posterior view, it mainly attaches to the thyroid cartilage through ligaments. Its function is mainly closing off of the respiratory system when you swallow and open up when you're breathing. So that's the epiglottis. Next we have the aritenoid cartilages, which are paired. They are located here in yellow, right above the cricoid cartilage. And if you look at them from a side view, you will notice that it has a triangular shape with an apex on the top and a base. The base has two parts, or two processes. The anterior process is called the vocal process, since it attaches to the vocal ligaments, and I'll show you this later. The posterior process is called the muscular process, which serves as an attachment point for certain muscles. 
and the base of the aditenoid cartilage is called cricoid articular surface since it sits on the cricoid surface. Next we have the corniculate cartilage which is here in red and it lies on top of the aditenoid cartilage. It doesn't really have any specific functions on its own other than serving as an attachment point for certain muscles as well. So let's take that one. The last ones are the cuneiform cartilages here highlighted in green. There are two small elongated pieces of yellow elastic cartilage which lie in something called the aryepiglottic fold. The aryepiglottic fold is essentially a fold that lines the entrance of the larynx and the cuneiform cartilage form a tubercle on it which is visible if you examine the larynx of a patient. This tubercle is called the cuneiform tubercle. So let's go ahead and tick that one as well. So those are the cartilages that make up the larynx. Now we need to cover the connections in the larynx as well, or the junctura laryngis. But to really understand these connections, we need to have a basic understanding of the different connections form we have in our body. So the articular system in the larynx is divided into two types of connections. There are the continuous articulations and the discontinuous articulations. Now what are the difference between those two? Continuous connections are uninterrupted articular connections, hence the name continuous. Discontinuous connections are interrupted in that it contains a cavity within the articulation which form a joint. Now I like to use the ribs as an example for the continuous connections in the larynx because one of the connection types is called cartilaginous or synchondrosis which is where you'll find at the point where the ribs meet the coastal cartilage called the costochondral synchondrosis. The other type of continuous connections you'll find in the larynx is a fibrous type of connection which form membranes or ligaments very much like the intercoastal membrane you see here. Discontinuous connections are joints. In the larynx you'll find two synovial joints just like this one which are ligaments forming a sac full of synovial fluid. Now let's do the continuous connections of the larynx first and then do the discontinuous connections. The larynx has only one cartilaginous connection point and that is between the corniculate cartilage and the aritenoid cartilage. So here is the larynx, here is the corniculate cartilage and here is the aritenoid cartilage. Here is the cartilaginous connection. It's a very dense connection, nearly a bony joint. For the fibrous connections we have the thyrohyoid membrane which is a membrane between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone as you see here. So this in green is the thyrohyoid membrane. Theoretically it has two parts, a median thyrohyoid membrane and the lateral thyrohyoid membrane as you see here. Next we have the cricothyroid membrane which lies between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. So it's this one. The cricothyroid membrane is a membrane that are made up of two ligaments. One of them is the median cricothyroid ligament and the other one is the lateral cricothyroid ligament or conus elasticus. The conus elasticus is really important and I'll talk briefly about it later in this video. Then there is the cricotracheal ligament between the cricoid cartilage and the trachea as you see here. Then we have the thyroepiglottic ligament which is this one connecting the epiglottis to the thyroid cartilage. And then we have the heoepiglottic ligament which connects the epiglottis to the hyoid bone as you see here. So all of those are the continuous connections we have in the larynx. Now let's do the discontinuous connections. We have two synovial joints in the larynx and if you really paid attention earlier in this video you would know these already from when I talked about the cricoid cartilage because the first one is the cricothyroid articulation which is a synovial joint between the inferior horn of the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. The other one is the cricoaritenoid articulation between the base of the aritenoid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. They look like this filled with synovial fluid for a nice movement of the larynx. Now, here you see a lateral view of the larynx. If you make a vertical cut of the larynx, as you see here, and look at it from this view, you will see this. So let's go over some important landmarks. There's the epiglottis, the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage, and the hyoid bone. And between the cartilages, you will find the thyrohyoid membrane. So let's now go ahead and cover the walls of the larynx. The larynx has four layers. We have the tunica mucosa here in blue, 
Then underneath that, there's a tela submucosa. Then you have a layer of cartilage and muscles, as you see here. And lastly, there's tunica adventitia, which are connected tissue covering the surface of the larynx. Now, let's go through each of these layers and look at their characteristics, and we will start with the tunica mucosa. So again, the tunica mucosa is here. It's the innermost lining of the larynx. At the vestibular folds, which is the upper fold, it's lined by respiratory epithelium, which are epithelium specialized in filtering the air, as they contain cilia that catches small particles before they go further down into the lungs. The vocal folds are lined by stratified squamous epithelium, which are essentially logical because the vocal folds are under a lot of strain, allowing you to speak loudly and for a longer period of time without harming your vocal folds. In chronic smokers and people who use their voice a lot, like in singers, the respiratory epithelium lining the vestibular folds are often damaged and replaced by stratified squamous epithelium, which makes them more susceptible for lower respiratory tract infections since the cilia of the respiratory epithelium are gone. So that's the lining. But the tunica mucosa also contain glands or laryngeal glands lubricating the surface and as well as small lymph nodules for immunity. So that's the tunica mucosa. Next we have the tela submucosa, which is here. Remember earlier when we went through the connections of the larynx, where we talked about the continuous connections, specifically the fibrous membrane of the larynx? Well, at some places, the fibrous membranes form the so-called fibroelastic membrane, which are elastic membranes playing a key role in you being able to speak. There are two fibroelastic membranes in the larynx. The first one is the quadrangular membrane, which are here. And if you look at the posterior view of the larynx, it's much easier to see this membrane. It's a membrane that goes between the vestibular folds and the epiglottis, as you see here. Now, there's two margins left that aren't connected to anything. The upper margin form the aryepiglottic fold. If you remember this one from earlier, the aryepiglottic fold is a fold lining the entrance of the larynx. The lower margin form the vestibular ligament, which is a ligament you see down here, going between the aritenoid cartilage and the thyroid cartilage. The other fibroelastic membrane we have is the conus elasticus, or the lateral cricothyroid ligament. It's this one, if you remember this from earlier. If you turn it around, you will see that it's connected to the cricoid cartilage, the aritenoid cartilage, and the thyroid cartilage. But it has one free margin, and that's the upper margin, which form the vocal ligaments. This ligament is a part of the vocal fold, which is the fold that makes it possible to speak once they vibrate. And I'll show you this later. So that is the tela submucosa. Next we have the cartilage and muscle layers, as you see here. We've already covered the cartilages, but the muscles of the larynx are grouped according to their function. So we have three groups of muscles in the larynx. The first one are the muscles that open and narrow the laryngeal inlet, or the entrance. So this one it opens and narrows the entrance of the larynx. The next ones are the muscles that open and narrow the rima glottidis. And the rima glottidis is here, situated between the vocal folds, or the vocal cords. The fold superior to the rima glottidis is called the rima vestibuli, between the vestibular folds. And again, don't forget that the vocal ligaments are here, as you remember earlier, formed by the superior margin of conus elasticus. So the vocal ligament is a part of the vocal cords, and the rima glottidis is between the vocal cords. And if you look at the larynx looking from this direction, you will see this, with the epiglottis here and the aryepiglottic fold here. So the vocal ligament is located right about here. Always remember that this pointy end is the anterior side, and this rounded one is the posterior side. Now the rima glottidis is here, between the vocal cords. Rima vestibuli is here, between the vestibular folds. So the muscles that open and narrow the rima glottidis work like this. They open or narrow the rima glottidis. The last muscle group are the muscles that act on the vocal cord itself. Earlier, I told you that the vocal ligament is situated here. But that's not entirely correct. Look closely at the structures here. The vocal ligament is located within the mucous membranes. So the mucous membrane together with the vocal ligament is what is referred to as the vocal cords. 
So that's essentially what I mean by the last group of muscles. They act directly on the vocal cord, which uh, essentially is the vocal ligaments. There are muscles that tenses the vocal cord, such as the cricothyroid muscle. This muscle is situated here, as you see. And when they contract, they pull the thyroid cartilage to the front, tensing the vocal ligaments. So if you look posteriorly and zoom in a little bit, when the thyroid cartilage move forward, the vocal cord is tensed. The other muscles decrease the tension of the vocal cords, such as the vocalis muscle, situated right next to the vocal cords, as you see here. And when they contract, they pull the adetenoid cartilage forward to decrease the tension of the vocal cord. Lastly, we have the tunica adventitia. So here's the larynx. Tunica adventitia is a covering around the larynx, which is a tough connective tissue consisting mainly of dense collagen fibers. So that was the layers of the laryngeal wall. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is the laryngeal cavity. So the laryngeal cavity, or cavitas laryngis, is the whole cavity here. It starts at the laryngeal inlet, or the entrance, and ends at the lower border of the cricot cartilage. But we generally divide it into three landmarks. The first one is the laryngeal vestibule, going from the laryngeal entrance to the vestibular folds. Then there is the glottis, between the vestibular folds and the vocal cords, or the vocal folds, it's a synonym. There is an important thing we need to discuss here. Remember, the rima glottidis is here. We generally divide this cavity into two parts based on the structures around it. The anterior three-fifth is called the intermembranous part, since it's between membranes. The posterior two-fifth is intercartilaginous part, situated between the cartilages. And if we change up to a more realistic view, here you see that the anterior three-fifth is between the membranes and the posterior part lying between the cartilages, between the adytenoids here. Now, why is this important? Because they give you the ability to speak. When you're speaking, the vocal cords rub into each other in a process called phonation. But when you breathe, the folds are open for the air to pass through. But when you look closely at the glottis, notice there's a pouch at either side called the laryngeal ventricles, which act as a resonator. So it resonates the sound as you speak. From the vocal cords, we have the infraglottic cavity, which is until the lower border of the cricot cartilage. From this point, that's where your trachea is going to be. And that's the topic for our next video.